ministry from 7 a.m. every morning. Youth Impact Academy on Saturday of each, ignited for glory. Expect the obituary of your problem in this program. And whatsoever miracle, and whatsoever salvation, and whatsoever deliverance, whatsoever wonders of wonders, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that that will I do. When it's super, it's great. Great things, great miracles, great transformation great salvation it does great things great things of power and now at a time when many seek for freedom gck offers the supernatural ministry in songs is aaron williams our guest music minister i lift my eyes to your prayers are going to be answered. Supernatural freedom beckons only through Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, he says, I will do it. Bringing wonders for all at GCK October edition. He does wonders, wonders in the heart. Wonders in your soul, wonders in your spirit, wonders in your family, and wonders in your community. October 27 till November 1, 2022. Numberless possibilities, numberless miracles, numberless Lloyd's, their satellite, and all our social media platforms. Over the radio, on the television, online, anywhere you are, all it takes is to say, I be you, we adore you. Who is like unto thee? Who is like unto thee, O Lord? You are faithful in the morning, you are faithful all the time. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, O Lord? O Lord, you are faithful in the morning, you are faithful all the time. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, blessed be the name, O Lord. Blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, O Lord, O Lord. Blessed be thy name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, blessed be thy name, O Lord. Blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, O Lord, O Lord. Blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, blessed be the name, O Lord. Blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, blessed be thy name, O Lord. Oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessed. Be the name of the Lord. Emmanuel is here. Emmanuel is here. Emmanuel is here. Let us 
praise his holy name. Emmanuel is here. Emmanuel is here. Oh, praise his holy name. Emmanuel is here. Oh, Emmanuel is here. Let us praise his holy name. Emmanuel is here. Emmanuel is here. Oh, praise his holy name. Emmanuel is here. Emmanuel is here. Let us praise his holy name. Emmanuel is here. Emmanuel is here. Tell me what's your joy if you do not have Jesus. Tell me what's your joy. Tell me what's your joy. Tell me what's your joy if you do not have Jesus. Oh, tell me, tell me, tell me what's your joy. Oh, tell me, tell me, tell me. Hallelujah. If you do not have Jesus, tell me what's your joy. Tell me what's your joy if you do not have Jesus. Oh, tell me, tell me, tell me what's your joy. Hallelujah. Tell me what's your joy if you do not have Jesus. Tell me what's your joy. Tell me what's your joy. Let us tell me what's your joy. Oh, tell me, tell me. Oh, no, tell me, tell me. Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Saved by grace. Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Are you in that number? Saved by grace, are you in that number? Are you in that number? Saved by grace, are you in that number? Are you in that number? You must be born again. You must be born again. Verily, verily, yes, I say unto you, you must be born again. Amen. You must. Amen. You must be born again. Verily, verily, yes, I say. Unto you, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. Verily, verily, yes, I say unto you, you must be born again. All the way to Calvary he went for me. Jesus went for me. Savior went for me. All the way to Calvary he went for me. He died to set me free. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus went for me. Savior went me. He died to set me free. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus went for me, Savior went for me.
He's my everything, He's my all. He's my everything, both great and small. He made His life for me, made everything new. He's my everything, He's my all, He's my all, He's my everything. Is my all, both great or small, made everything new. Is my everything. Is my all. Is my everything. Is my all. Is my everything, both great and small. He's my everything. Only for Jesus, day after day. Only for Jesus, let's come what's may. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. Only for Jesus, day after day, day after day. Day after day, I'll live for Jesus. Let's go, but may the Holy Spirit. I will obey, I'll live for Jesus. Day after day, day after day. Let's go, what's made the Holy Spirit. Only for Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided. I have decided. I have decided. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back, I have decided, I have decided. I have decided close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, all along my pilgrim's journey, Savior let me walk with thee, close to 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 thee, all along my pilgrim's journey, Savior let me walk with thee, close to thee, close to thee. Oh, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, all along. Brethren, the road is very narrow, is very narrow, is very narrow. Brethren, the road is very 
very narrow. You must strive to enter in, enter in. It's very narrow, it's very narrow, it's very narrow. Brethren, the road is very narrow. You must strive to enter in, enter in. It's very narrow, it's very narrow. Brethren, until I reach my home, until I reach my home, I will never, never stop my journey up way. Hallelujah, until I reach my home until I see Jesus. Until I see Jesus, until I see Jesus, I will never, never. Hallelujah, until I see, until I wear a crown. Until I wear a crown, until I wear a crown, I will never, never stop. Hallelujah. Continue, Jesus says, continue. I am coming very soon, by and by. By and by, by and by, by and by, continue. By and by, continue. Jesus says, continue. Bright in the corner where you are. Bright in the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor you may find across the bar. Bright in the corner where you are. Bright in the corner. Bright in the corner. Someone far from our you may find across the bar where you are. Bright in the corner. Bright in the corner. Someone far from our you may find across the bar. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Walking in the light of God. It is a great thing, yes, to serve the Lord. It is a great thing. To serve the Lord, it is a great thing. To serve the Lord, walking in the light of God. So let us walk, 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 walking in the light. Let us walk, 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 walking in the light. So let us walk, 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 walking in the light. Walking in the light of God, let us walk. So let us walk. Walking in the light, let us walk, 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 walk. Let us walk, 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 
Walking in the light, walking in the light of God. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Oh, walking in the light of God. So let us walk. Walk, walk, walk. Let us walk, 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 walk. Let us walk, 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 walking in the light. This little light of mine, I will let it shine. This little light of mine, I will let it shine. This little light of mine, I will let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, hallelujah. I will let it shine, this little light of mine, I will let it shine, this little light of mine, I will let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Lift up the expectation of your people in Jesus' name. Help us to cross over to the next level in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, that you open our eyes of understanding. We will see. We will demand. We will receive. Great will be the experience of all your children in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody shout, Amen. We're coming to Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Second Peter chapter 1. From verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There's a lot in those two verses. It says that we become partakers of the divine nature. He's spoken about grace being available. Is spoken about escaping from the corruption, or escaping the corruption that is in the world through lust. Is spoken about knowledge, the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it says we should grow in that knowledge, and eventually, the bottom line, the conclusion, is that we are partakers of the divine nature. Tonight, we're looking at the message, the privileged partakers of the divine nature. The privileged partakers of the divine nature. Possessing the divine nature makes us act like God. Whenever we read the scriptures, we should interpret that scripture and ask ourselves, what does it mean? If we add the divine nature, what's the implication of that? As we look at the whole world, the earth created by God, everything in existence partakes of the same nature, of the same powers, of the same attributes, of the same characteristics, that belong to its particular 
peculiar species or kind. The fish will have the attributes of fish. I will be able to swim. If there is a fish that has the nature of the fish and is not able to swim, that will be surprising and shocking. The birds also partake of every bird-like faculty. And therefore, every bird, because of the nature, is able to fly. And so it is with the human race, with human beings, when we have the nature of human beings, of Adam, we're able to stand, we're able to walk, we're able to hear, we're able to see, we're able to speak. And when we are born in a particular locality, we take on the customs, the language, and the understanding of that locality because we have the nature of the people in that locality. The same thing in the family of God, born of God, purged by Christ, indwelt by the Spirit, we have the promise of the divine nature. We have the privilege of the divine nature. We have the power of the divine nature. When we say divine nature, what does that translate to? The spiritual attributes of God, spiritual nature. The righteous character of God, a righteous nature. And the supernatural possibilities of God, the divine nature, supernatural. Let's see what the scripture says. We're looking at Luke chapter 6, reading from verse 40. Luke chapter 6, verse 40. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect, everyone that is matured, everyone that is complete, everyone that looks like the master shall be as his master. I should be asking myself, you should be asking yourself, how much am I near to born again? I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and I have the Bible, and I have the privilege to pray, and I have all these promises. How much have all these things helped me to attain and to remain of the nature of God. John chapter 14. Actually, Christ expects that as we are believers, with what he was going to do at Calvary, and with what promises he has given us, he expects we will be like him. Look at John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Because when I get to the Father, I will present my sacrifice and blood, the substitutionary sacrifice before the Lord. And I will tell the Lord, you sent me to the world to raise up sons like me and to bring them to glory and to virtue. I have done it. And because of that, because I go to the Father, you, my disciples, you will not remain with the nature of man, human nature. You're going to have the divine nature and the works I do, you will do. And greater works than these you will do because I go to my Father. Now, I want you to compare two verses of Scripture. The first we have Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. 
before I read this verse, whenever we reach any verse of scripture that goes beyond our present experience, we shouldn't dismiss it and say, that cannot be true because I'm not there. Are you saying because you are not there, you will never get there? Are you saying because you are not there, nobody in the body of Christ all over the world will ever get there? Are you saying because you are not there, the promise of God cannot be fulfilled? Are we going to measure the promise of God and the height of the privilege with your experience? Or rather, wouldn't you say, this is where I am now, and this is what God has provided for me, and because of that, I will rise up, and you will rise up. Look at these two verses now. The first one, Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Can you say that? With God, nothing shall be impossible. Notice the last four words. Nothing shall be impossible. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. We're reading from verse 20. In verse 20 it says, And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, your present stage, your present status. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And tell me, Nothing shall be impossible unto you. The same phrase used about God, for with God nothing shall be impossible. As he imparts his nature unto us, his power unto us, and he imparts unto us the result of Calvary. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Any amen? amen? Now, notice these two verses again. Mark chapter 10, verse 27. And please understand, when we go to school, we finish primary school. We don't stop there. We know there is more. We go to high school, secondary school, college. We don't stop there. We know there is more. We even go to the university, and yet we know there could be more. And so a person that knows there is more, he'll say, I'm not there today, but I will aspire. I'm not there today, but I will ask. I'm not there today. But I'm going to advance. You will advance. We're looking at Mark chapter 10, verse 27. In Mark chapter 10, verse 27, And Jesus looking upon them says, With men it is impossible. Look at this. But with God. But with God, all things are possible. Notice those words, all things are possible. Those four words again, we're looking at chapter 9, verse 23. Chapter 9, verse 23. You're looking at those four words, all things are possible possible. Verse 23, chapter 9, verse 23, Mark, Jesus says unto him, 
if thou canst believe, tell me, all things are possible to him that believeth. The same words used concerning God, all things are possible with God, all things are possible to him who believes. Again, you're not there yet. We're not there yet. But is it going to be that through, whole, through the whole generation of the Christian people that Jesus has saved, he has sanctified, he has filled with the Holy Ghost, is it going to be that nobody, no single person will attain to what Christ has promised and he said, nothing shall be impossible, all things are possible, you have the divine nature, and uh, the works I do ye shall do, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go to the Father. Is the new covenant actually better than the old covenant? In the old covenant, God healed three million people there was not one feeble person among them. Old covenant. In the old covenant, the rod of Aaron, of Moses, swallowed up all the rods of the magicians. In the old covenant, Joshua said, Son, stand there. I'm having, I'm ha I need a longer time in battle. In the old covenant, 185,000 enemies of the children of Israel were slain in one night. In the old covenant, the Red Sea parted. In the old covenant, River Jordan parted for them. In the old covenant, the Jericho walls were there and they went round and without striking or knocking anything, all the walls came down. Is it going to be that the new covenant will not even be up to the old covenant? In the new covenant, Jesus Christ walked on the water and Peter said, if that's you, bid me come. He said, come. And he came out of the boat and walked on the water. New covenant. In the new covenant, the dead were raised. Is it going to be that the generation of today will not match the old covenant, will not match the new covenant, and we're going to remain at the lowest level of Christianity, God forbid. Divine nature, and that possibility will be done in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. If it's going to be like that, somebody must wake up. Number one, you acknowledge acknowledge that it is possible because if you never think about it if you never acknowledge it and you just read your bible read your bible thank god we don't steal anymore thank god we don't commit immorality anymore thank god our lives are plain and clear thank god we're living the normal 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 life even enoch in genesis lived a life like that, 300 years, so what are we talking about? Even Samuel lived a life like that. Even Daniel lived a life like that. And this is the new covenant where we rise higher. You will rise higher. Number one, acknowledge it's possible. This divine nature will produce something we have never seen in Jesus' name. Number two, you must aspire, aspire. You see, it's there. But there must be something that stirs you up and you say, I'm going to have, I'm not going to remain the way I am now. You will not remain the way you are now. You know, if we only moved up an inch every day, an inch every day, an inch every day in a 12 day days will move up one foot in about a month and a few days will move up one yard but we must make the effort we must believe 
you'll be better than you are today. You aspire, number three is to ask, because it says we have not because we ask not. We have not because we ask not. Look at our educational system again. After we finish primary school, the parents and that pupil will ask, will demand. They will look for a higher school and place the child there. And the child might be average, but because the child is aspiring, because the child is acknowledging, and because the child is asking, the one that was, you know, just a few days ago, didn't know the alphabet, will be having a, a college degree. And the one that didn't know in the Christian life how to do the works of Christ. I'm talking about my people now. You will have a degree, a degree that will have a decree in Jesus' name. You acknowledge, you aspire, you ask, you accept. After asking, you must begin to thank God. And you will not just be asking and asking and asking, and it's never done. You will accept. You will, the next word, appropriate. That's for me. The Lord said he gave me the divine nature. And the divine nature made me to escape and also now to have the attributes, the transferable attributes of God. And I appropriate that. It's mine. I said it's mine. And then you advance. Advance. In what you do, raise it up. In places you go, lift it up. Because if you have something in you know, and you don't use it, it will atrophy. That is, it will go dead. You will already now, you have acknowledged, you have aspired, you have asked, you have accepted, you have appropriated, advance, do something. More than what you did yesterday. Because if you don't do today, more than you did yesterday, you will not know the power is there. The power is there. And then you activate, activate it, activate it. Don't allow it to remain dormant. Activate it. You are going higher in Jesus' name. Who is going higher? I said who is going higher? Talk with your mouth. Who is going higher? You are the one. You will go higher in Jesus' name. As I said, we're talking about the privileged partakers of the divine nature. Let's go back to what happened in the past. Number one, the proof and fruit of the depraved nature. The proof and fruit of the depraved nature. Point number two, the promise and faith for the divine nature. The promise and the faith for the divine nature. Number three, our progress through focus on his displayed nature, demonstrated nature, his disclosed nature, his declared nature. Our progress through focus on his displayed nature. Let's come back to number one, the proof and fruit of the depraved nature. Let's see the beginning in chapter one of Genesis. Genesis chapter one, reading from verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. That was the intention of God. That was the purpose and the plan of God. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth 
and over every creeping sin that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man. How? Tell me. In his own image, that's the nature of God, that's the divine nature. In the image of God created he him, male and female, not only for the men, not only for the brothers, for the men and the women, the brothers and the sisters. Thank God you have your portion today. So God created man in his own image, male and female, created he them and it says the image of God was in them both of them what then happened Genesis chapter 3 verse 9 and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him where art thou they had eaten the forbidden fruit and because of that, they lost the divine image, the divine nature. They became naked. And you know the curse that came. Chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 5. In chapter 6, verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. They had lost the image of God. Exodus chapter 32. We're reading from verse 7. Exodus 32 verse 7. It says, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down. For thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. The Lord wanted to circumcise their heart so that they would love him with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind. And the nature of God, righteous, supernatural, spiritual, will be in every one of them again. But they corrupted themselves. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you are see quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. This now for the whole world, everyone, dead in trespasses and sins. The nature of God was no more there wherein in time past he walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, instead of having the divine nature, they now add the depraved nature, the nature of Satan. Verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by, by what? Out aloud. By nature, the children of wrath, even as others. Nature, the satanic nature, the evil nature, had now come to everyone on earth. The depraved nature, the proof of the depraved nature, and the fruit of the depraved nature, Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. 
that she is the even went lower than the human nature, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over unto a reprobate mind. That's the depraved nature to do those things which are not convenient. Verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 17. Ephesians 4, reading from verse 17. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk no more as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated, separated, cut off from the life of God, they lost the divine nature through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all on cleanness with greediness. It's very clear from the word of God that those who are not saved, they are part of the world and they have the depraved nature. That's exactly why Christ came. He wanted to restore what we have lost. And he wanted to take away the depraved nature so that the divine nature will come. You will experience that divine nature. You will operate that divine nature. And that divine nature will be visible in your life in Jesus' name. And if it's going to be so, it must touch one day. I said it must touch one day. There must be one day you pick up yourself and you say, things cannot continue like this. This divine nature must be active in my life. I must be operative in my life. I must be able to demonstrate that now I'm a child of God and every offspring of any kind, any, anyone will demonstrate the characteristics of the parent and God is your father and Jesus is your savior and the Holy Ghost is the power that lives inside you. When I believe something, I know how I respond. Yeah. Point number two now, the promise and faith for the divine nature. The promise and the faith for the divine nature. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3, according as his divine power according as his divine power he has given unto us he has given unto us it's now for us to acknowledge it it's now for us to aspire to what he has given us it's now for us to ask and to accept and to appropriate and to ascend advance and to activate it has been given unto us how many things there all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us through the knowledge of him through the knowledge of him how do we know what he has given us by the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us promises, precious promises, great precious promises, 
exceedingly great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers, possessors of the divine nature, you will be a partaker. We shall all be possessors in Jesus' name. Whenever we come to a higher level, like we come to secondary school in educational pursuit, we don't go back to primary one again, always, always, always learning the alphabet. That's done. Let it rest. We don't go to the little, little things we used to know in the primary. If you're going to add, multiply, divide, but mass, what you have in the bracket and all the other things, we don't go back to that. We just know that all that is given, all that is settled. Now, it is what we're learning today we focus on. And so, as you come to the Word of God, and it says, He has given to us the divine nature. And it is through the knowledge of Him that called us to glory and to virtue. You know, sometimes uh, when we say that God has given us everything, everything in life, everything in godliness, and we can be holy, and we can remain holy. If somebody says, but how about so-and-so who backslid? Are we going to measure the whole revelation of the Bible with one person in your locality that backslid? When we say that God has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness, and then we say he will keep us healthy. He will keep you healthy. Then somebody will look at the side and say, okay, if it's going to keep us healthy, how about so and so that was sick? We're not happy that they are sick. We're not condemning anyone because they're sick. We're saying that we're not going to measure the promises of God by the experience of so and so. If so and so will wake up and rise up, he will realize he has given unto us great and precious promises. And by those promises, we're partakers of the divine nature. And that divine nature can become, can begin to activate and can become active in every life, even from tonight in Jesus' name. And he says, having escaped, having escaped the corruption, the corruption that is moral, the corruption of the human flesh, the corruption of life. We have escaped the corruption. Sickness comes to corrupt the body. Temptation comes to corrupt the mind. Satan comes to corrupt our mind, our intelligence, and he wants to be the Lord over every life, every time. But I say no. You say no. I said you will say no. We will escape the corruption in the world in Jesus' name. The promise and the faith for the divine nature. Let's come back now to Genesis again, chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Here is what Christ has come to restore. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. What do you have? Let them have dominion. I said, what do you have? Dominion. And then in verse 27, so God created man. In his own image, in the image of God, created he him. Male and female created he them. Christ is able to restore to repair 
whatever Adam lost. In our lives,